Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and today I'm taking a look at a big game called ISS Vanguard. Now, we played ISS Vanguard um, a couple times here live on the Dice Tower before it was, uh, before it was published, back when it was on GameFound. Uh, this is an Awaken Realms game. This is a humongous game. And because it's so big, I'm the one reviewing it because I've put 20 to 25 hours worth of time into playing this and I just, not everyone here had the time to do that. So I went in and played a lot of this and I wanted to give you my impressions on playing through this. In this game, you were on the ISS Vanguard, a big ship that runs into some mysterious builders or some sort of thing going on. And it's a it's an interesting kind of plot type thing. Some people are comparing it to Mass Effect, which may or may not be true, I don't know. But I for me, my comparisons would be there's a lot of sci-fi and it has a whole idea of, ooh, some alien on a planet. That's It's not like action-packed necessarily. It's more about this idea of discovery is the theme and who are these builders and what did they do? Things like that. And so in this game, it's broken up into two distinct halves. There's a ship phase, where you're going through and working on the ship, Vanguard, and then there's a exploration phase where you're dropping down on planets and going on to them. This is a massive game. There's a lot going on in it. And I think I understand the game pretty well at this point, but explaining it's gonna be a bit overwhelming. So I'm just gonna show you a lot of it and then we'll come back and I'll tell you what I think of it. This is the ISS Vanguard. And I mean by this, I mean, this notebook is your ship. And this is, you know, everything that you're going to be doing. When you play through the game, if you're resuming a save game, and you're going to have to save this, there's no way you can play through it straight, you'll always start here at the beginning, and it will tell you what you need to do. And then you work your way through the book. Now, I'm just going to briefly talk about how the book works a little bit, because I really find this sort of thing to be interesting. You go here through the bridge. Now, I'm trying to hide all the stuff, so I took everything out that I'm at, but there's all kinds of bridge upgrades that you can get, and as you get bridge upgrades, you'll put them in here. There is a companion to this book called this awaiting envelope, and when you have cards, many times you put them in this awaiting envelope, and you'll pull them out, and it will tell you to do that at different times. So if I get a bridge upgrade from another point in the story, it will go into that awaiting envelope, and then here, you pull this stuff out. You'll also see here at the top, there's a tech level, so this is a starting tech level. You start tech one, which is gonna give you three energy, and we'll talk a bit more about energy in a bit. And this here gives you two of these command tokens, um, your objective. Your objective also tells you a situation. You'll draw a random situation. So here's a legal power diversion. And you have to decide to either deal with this situation or not deal with it, but either way, it's gonna go in here and if it's, you haven't dealt with it by the next time you go through the book, it's gonna come back to haunt you in various ways. So this is what you're gonna be doing here. And then, after you're done with the bridge, you go to the star map. Now the star map is how you decide where you're gonna to go to next. So you're gonna be flying around through the solar system, and as you are, or through the galaxy or whatever, when you're here, you'll pay a certain amount of energy to go to another page. Sometimes it will have you read a different log, you need some technologies to go to different pages. And then when you're on the page, you can spend different amounts of energy to go visit these different areas here. If there is a spot that shows a spaceship here, that's a spot you're going to land on and do a planetary exploration, which is the second half of the game. And so you're going to be trying to figure this thing out. You'll be using the logs a lot. And I guess I should talk about the logs for just a second. The game comes with an operations book and a log book. The operations book is only used if you're going to play through some standalone scenarios rather than, you know, the campaign. The campaign, you're going to go through the log book. And so when you get to a certain log number, let's say log 351, you'll read whatever it says here, has a bunch of dialogue. Um, it might have some check boxes. Sometimes when you get to different logs, depending on what you've said before, different things might happen. There's all sorts of things that are going to be in the logs here. And you can see there's a ton of material in here. Or you can simply use the app. So on the app, you would just say, I'm going to listen to log 12. And then you do this. Well, that log doesn't exist. Okay, log 1 maybe. 
And then it would it, it it you have the text here, to, but it also has voice acting. And then you would sometimes you'll proceed. It will tell you do something different and walk you through it. And I should mention this game comes with a tutorial that walks you through the entire first mission almost exactly as to what to do. Next off in the book, you're going to go to the ship facilities. And in the ship facilities, this is where you have different spots in the ship you can go to, including a secret future one. Um, you can go to situation room, you can go to the research laboratory, you can go to the barracks, you can go to the production complex. At this point, I want to mention the crew. There's lots and lots of crew members that you can have. And all these crew have their own little story on the back. They all can use one symbol as a specific icon of a certain type, and they all have a special ability and a certain number of charges, which is the number of times they can use that special ability. Whenever you have a crew member, they're going to be on one of four different teams. You have the engineering, security, recon, and science. And each of them comes with its own little box. We'll talk more about these boxes, but what's gonna matter is you are going to have, they're gonna have different ranks. They can have a rank one, two, or three. So if, for example, I hire uh, Bojana here, and I want her to be on the recon team, I put this on her to show that she's rank one, and on a mission, her card will go here. Her charges will go here, and the dice that she has goes here, although you can see you need to be higher ranks to be able to use all the dice that you have. I mentioned crew because you're going to eventually have a decent amount of crew. Well, I assume you'll have a decent amount of crew, and some of them you'll send out on a mission. You need to keep at least one of each type to go out on missions, but the rest you're going to be using to man your ship. So to go to these different spots, you'll spend these command tokens that you got earlier. So the more you have, the more times you can visit these different spots. So there's the research laboratory. When you're on planets, you're going to find different types of resources. Um, they're called discoveries, mineral discoveries, alien organisms. And once you got them, you'll be able to use them to figure out a research thing. So I would take this, I would flip it over, and it gives me a whole bunch of stuff. It might give me new weapons in my armory. It might give me new research projects. It might give me production projects. And you're always able to research one here, as long as you have the materials. If you want to research extra ones, you would need to discard people. Basically, you're spending these people on this turn, as long as they match the symbols on the extra projects. Then we have production complex. There's a lot of different production projects that you start off with and you'll get more as time goes by. When you start working on a production project, you're simply going to put it here in your production line, starting at one of these stages. And every time you use this, these move over. Um, and when they're done, you'll flip them over and get a whole pile of stuff from them also. Again, this is another way to get more weapons and more things. In fact, you'll get more stuff from this while the research often gives you more productions or other things like that. You also can go to the barracks, and that's a place where you can train people and upgrade their levels and or just get more crew members. And this is a good way to get more crew members by coming here. And the situation room, remember that situation I talked about earlier that showed up and we stuck in that envelope? You can deal with that situation by going here and you'll have to likely spend some crew members on it. When you're done doing all that, then you go to the hangar and you're going to get on one of your landing craft. So you only start with this basic space ranger um, and that comes with a larger board that you'll be using to go land on the planet. So you get ready at the hangar, you'll customize it with any landing mods, there's none here, but I have a lot in my game, that you'll be able to put on it. And then you launch the mission. Launching the mission goes through the planeto planetopedia, and you, whatever planet you land on, there's different pages for these, and don't worry, this doesn't really spoil anything. You'll land on this planet, there's usually a specific spot that you land on the planet, it will show you, like here's where you land. And then you're going to put your people on the board. And so the game comes with various miniatures that you can use to represent that. And sometimes you are required to bring a member from each team, but sometimes you just you don't you can bring down depending on the number of players that you have. And then players are going to be playing through using these boards and dice to kind of explore and complete a mission. 
Now, there's a whole lot about this. This is half the game. I'm not going to show you everything, but there will be a mission card that's here that you need to accomplish, although that mission can change or not. Sometimes there will be unique discoveries that you'll find, unique things that are on the planet that will help you out. Um, there are things that you can do on the planet. Sometimes you'll see this says just read a certain log when you go there. New cards can be placed on the planet and change things. And some planets may even have a second section that you go to. On players' turns, they're going to have a certain number of actions that they can do. Two actions that you can do. One of them can be a special action on the board and some basic actions. Many of your actions are going to re cause you to do different dice tests. Whenever you do dice tests, you're going to choose which dice that you use and you'll roll them. Uh, these exclamation points are often going to cause negative things to happen. Each die has a symbol that shows up on that die more often. So you can see this one has a strength symbol on it. And some dice, like this one, has a, this is a wild symbol. This is great. This works for everything. As the game goes by, you'll be able to buy more dice. I'm showing you the starting dice that the recon has. But once you're done with dice, you're going to put them here, and you're going to need to rest or find some other way to move the dice back here. You have an action that lets you permanently remove a die for the mission to bring five dice back, but you realize you can only do that so many times. You also have these charges you can spend to do things, and you have a deck of cards. At the beginning of each mission, you're going to build a deck from this is the recon deck, and you can only use cards that show your rank or lower. So unless I go up to rank two, I can't use this focus card. And these cards can be played. Many times they're going to let you change something like this one here says during a dice check, I can reroll a die of any of the three colors. And if I roll this symbol during a dice check, that lets me refresh a die. Well, that's convenient. I'll be able to bring a die back. And so there's different combos of things at the bottom. You can also spend an action just to draw another card and to try to roll a dice combo if you want to. And then you can rest. Like I said, you get to bring back half your dice, but you also have to use a supply on your ship. Now, it does sound like I'm throwing a lot of rules at you, but just keep an eye. Your shipboard is going to be here. You'll start with a certain number of supplies that you can use to rest. You have mods you can place on it. And also, there's a certain amount of equipment and things you can bring down onto the planet, which it shows you near the top. Um, but this is here, and if as you collect stuff, and you'll, you'll put... Um, cards that you find. There's also what's called a rank up card, which I'm not going to show you, but basically gives you a goal. And if you accomplish that goal, all the people who go on this mission will go up one level in ranking. As I said, there's a lot going on. You can do special actions on these, like here's thermal vents. I can do a dice check to check the thermal vents. I need to roll these exact symbols to get the best thing. I'll get both the yellow and the green. This gives me two microorganism leads, which help me get the microorganism discovery. Leads you pull from a bag and you're trying to get a total of three. If I roll a red, green, and blue die, I get a, a, like a victory point token that I can use. And I'll replace this with a new card, which will be something else. If I roll any exclamation points that I can't unchange, uh, or if I fail the dice check, I will go to log 31, which is probably not a good thing, but who knows. When you move from spot to spot, there will be different things. Sometimes here it will tell me, for example, I have to exhaust a die. Sometimes it just shows a person, and for that, you'll look over here and see what the, this is kind of the environmental effects, and it says when I travel, this is, I have to roll a die, and if a success, I move, but if I roll this, I have to roll a danger die. And danger dice can give your people wounds and do all sorts of negative things. I'm not going to say a whole lot more about that part of the game, because that part of the game has been shown on the internet a lot, and you can watch us. On the Dice Tower, we actually went through a couple missions as we played through. And so there's events that will happen after each person's turn and things like that. But eventually, you will either complete your mission or fail. It's possible for everyone to die or some other way to fail. And then you'll leave the planet, basically cleaning everything up. You will then dock back with the ship and deal with the discoveries that you've collected and you get all your crew members to be able to use them again. You're going to debrief, which is a way to promote people, crew members, and buy and sell the different dice you have. You unload your unique discoveries here. When If you get a whole row of unique discoveries, you get a special bonus. Um, here is the med bay. This is where you put people who are wounded. And depending on the number of wounds they have, they might even go to critical injuries. And in critical injuries, you have to roll dice for them because they might die at some point. Speaking of death, 
<laughs> I'm leaving Raven Tyson here since Raven Tyson didn't die in my game. But yeah, this is where you put the people who die. But the good thing is when someone dies, you get some sort of benefit from that happening. It's not great, but it's something. And then if you want to save the game, this is a save point. Now, I want to be really clear. I didn't show you half of what's in here. But this is playing through basically one round of the game. I would say that this takes around three to four hours, maybe, uh, depending on how long the, the, the mission takes on the planet. It might take two to three hours once you know what you're doing. It depends how fast you go through this book. There's all sorts of things. Everything fits in a big box. There's extra c components and cards. The cards are stored in trays. Let me show you. There's two big trays here. But this tray here has all sorts of point of interest. These are cards that you'll replace on the different spots on the board. You can see how many of those there are that are going to show up. And different missions and global conditions and different unique discoveries that you can find on the planet and injuries. And then that's just one of the boxes of card. The other box of cards has all the different ways to upgrade your ship and different planets and more. And then there's a secret envelope that has more stuff that will be added to the game later on. So that's just a bit of how you play. Let's go to my thoughts. Like I said, there's a lot going on in this. Now, despite that, so Awakened Realms is known for big, grandiose games, starting with Nemesis and moving on to Tainted Grail and Aether Fields. And I think, actually, that this game's flow flows slightly easier than the last one, Ether Fields. And the space part is really interesting and the theme is interesting, but even though I say all that, there still is a lot going on. The game walks you through, so I wanna talk about the ease of play for a bit. The game walks you through a tutorial. The very first planet you walk on has these two tutorial card packs that they, that they come in a very specific order. They say, put this card here now, do this now, do this. The the logbook slash app walks you through it. Okay, do this now, do this. And they let you make a few minor decisions near the end of the, you know, the mission because you land on the planet and it tells you all that. And that's really helpful. And then the second time I went on a planet, I was like, they held my hand so much on the first time that I had to go back and read how to go through and do it again anyway. It was a really weird tutorial because it told you so much exactly what to do that the second time I was like, oh, well, they told me what to do last time. Where do I get the event cards? And I just found that to be a little bit of a tough gig going through. I'm still not even 100% sure that I get every role in this game right. Um, and dice checks and when to play cards and things like that and assisting people on dice checks. There is a lot of rules. And because the book is split into a tutorial and into the, the rule book, it's split in tutorial, and then the rules and such, sometimes finding exactly where a rule is. I mean, there's an index, but it was a bit going through, and I've been through that rule book a lot going on. Now, that's the exploration phase, and I want to mention that because this game has two very distinct phases, the exploration phase and the ship book. I played the exploration phase, like I said, a couple times before this game was published. I never really touched a ship book. The ship book looked overly complex. But I gotta say, the ship book is, for me, my favorite part of this game. I love going through here. I almost never had to look up rules for this stuff because each page just tells you what to do next and I'm putting cards in and I'm upgrading this stuff. What this reminds me a lot, actually the whole game, ISS Vanguard, reminds me a lot of XCOM. Uh, if you ever played the old XCOM UFO defense type games because you had a mission that you went and dealt with, but then you would spend so much time developing technology and upgrading your base and getting your new people ready and naming them and preparing them and you get so caught up in that and then you go out on a mission. And that's how I feel about ISS Vanguard. Just going through this book is so much fun. Like, ooh, I upgraded this, I have this now. Ooh, I got this new weapon, I got that. And then when I go down to planetary exploration, the whole time I'm there, I'm like, ooh, Get, that, get those mineral deposits because we can use those to upgrade stuff on the ship. So for me, this is the main fun of the game. Moving around on the planet is fun, but there was a couple things I did not like about it. One, it's very difficult and the dice checks are hard and it's always, they're always like, hey, you thought this would be easier? No, it's not. Every planet you land on is like a, just a, a whirlwind of terror. You know, whatever it might be. You land on a desert planet, oh, it's going to be super hot. You land on a green planet, everything is going to try to kill you. You land on, a, on a, a windy planet and whatever. And in fact, that one guy I showed you who died, and I had some people who came really close to dying, but he's the one who died. 
I feel pretty confident there was no way he was going to live. The game made him die on me. And that's one of the minor things I don't like about ISS Vanguard, is sometimes I feel like it's really tough and things happen and it just, that part doesn't feel fun. So one part of this game I really dislike and that's landing on a planet. I don't find that to be fun at all. You, you're bringing your ship down, you roll a die, depending on what you roll, you might lose some supplies, you might lose some of your cargo, you might take some injuries. And it's just not fun. I mean, it's like learn to land on the planet for crying out loud. It's this random rolling and it's so annoying in this game. You're like, oh, I got new weapons from the armory. Okay, load up the ship. And you're bringing the ship in and I phew, lose four things from the armory. I'm like, are you kidding me? I just spent so much time upgrading and getting that stuff ready and now I can't use it. And that part I disliked about the game a lot. Now there is an interesting thing that they do where there is uh, this little energy reader card and you can spend energy to kind of examine a planet and they'll say, hey, these are the icons you're gonna need on this planet. This is the way your ship should be. But you know what? Even if you do make your ship that way, sometimes it's just randomly negative. You know, I remember one time I, the, the, in this, when I was playing, the first time I got all my stuff from the armory, I was like, yay. On the way down, half of it was out. Then on the, then on the planet, for some reason, some people lost their equipment right away for some event or something. I was like, are you kidding me? I just got this stuff. I'm not even getting to use it. And I think that Awakened Realms needs to tilt away from that sometimes, because if you're gonna give me all this cool stuff, then let me use it for crying out loud. And let me have fun. Now it does get there. One of the things the game does let you use is it lets you buy dice and upgrade your dice. And that gets even cooler later on. I like the dice system. I wish it was a little easier to read the dice, um, but it, the dice system works. Although sometimes again, like I said, you roll dice, you're just like, oh well. That went poorly. I had the right dice. I had cards that let me manipulate the dice, but it didn't let me manipulate them in the right way. And, you know, the exploration's fine. It's making a bunch of dice checks, moving around, discovering stuff. Like I said, the story's well done. The voice acting is very well done. You get to discover things on these planets, even if the planets are, you know, hey, it's the desert planet. Hey, it's the green planet. Although I don't know what I would have done differently. So I like the story and everything, but I'll tell you what, when the mission's over, I get very excited because I come back to this part of the game. It's a game. It is a big game, and I left it set out for a very long period of time on my table at my house because putting everything away and storing everything is a real pain in the neck. I am coming down on this one at the end. I'm gonna give it an eight out of 10. I think it's a very good game. I had a very good experience. I had fun playing this game, but I don't know that I'm always going to want to go into the big effort it is to play this game. I've gone through that effort with Tainted Grail and with Etherfields, and the stories in both of those games are amazing, especially Tainted Grail. But Awakened Realms does a similar thing. In each of those, it has a grindy thing. In Tainted Grail, combat, to me, the more I do it, the less interested I am in it. You know, I just almost wish Tainted Grail just didn't have the combat. Just let me go around and enjoy this amazing story. Um, Aetherfields has these little guys of dreams that cause problems. And I'm like, man, just cut those out of the game. And in fact, they did do that too. Uh, added that in later. Vanguard does not have those in it. Vanguard has the, the dice checks are the closest to being grindy in this game. And, and also, I don't want to go back to a planet where I miss something. If I go miss one thing on a planet and then we get pulled off or we have to go back, I don't want to go back and land on that planet just so I can get something new off of it. I found that part to be a little grindy, but man, get me back on the ship, give me my crew. I'm deciding what crew to go here. I have to deal with these situations. I get to do the space. All that stuff is lots of fun. And I think that's what people are going to enjoy a lot this whole build up your ship because it's really well done. But the other stuff, just the fact that it takes so long to set things up, there's a somewhat random negative events, that keeps me from thinking the game is great and amazing. I think the game is very good. And I think some people are going to really love it. I'm really close. I had a great time playing it in many ways. In this part, I'd give this book a nine, but I give the landing on the planet a seven. So the in-between stuff is the eight. Um, but hey, if you're looking for a 50 hour experience, I think that sounds right. Um, I think I got about halfway where I'm at so far um, to see a lot of cool things, a lot of stuff going on and I've looked and read and 
saw what other people did. It looks like if you play through 50 hours, and there is replayability because you could build your ship differently. The story is going to play out somewhat the same there, although there are some divergent points that you can make in it. It's a big game. Hopefully the review gives you an idea of what I thought about it. Um, if you like the other Awaken Realm games like Tannic Grail and Aetherfields, you're going to really like this one. If you like big, long story, and if you like a video game brought to life, essentially, I think you'll also enjoy it. So check it out. That's ISS Vanguard. I'm Tom Vassell. We'll see you next time.